Now, anytime we come together, we believe that God has a word for us. One of the ways God makes things, he said he gave us, he called us to be a minister of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation is a people who reconcile other people to the Lord. So we have opportunity to be discipling. We have opportunity to reach out to people. We have opportunity to love them when, no matter where they are. What they are going through, the status in the world and the society, we need to love them. So we have those ability to be a, a minister of reconciliation. This is why I give to every Christian to be. By the way, I want to congratulate every one of you who have been baptized last week. Woo! Can you give a hand to yourself? Yeah. Can you imagine seven people get baptized? It's awesome. Congratulations for that. This is a, it's a commandment. And I always, we've been praying all the time for every one of you who have been baptized because I know you take a, a courageous step to be faithful to the Lord and let the world know that you are truly the disciple of Jesus Christ. So our prayer is a guide to help us so we can help each other, so we can grow together and fulfill the call that he had for us. So t today is the three weeks now we've been talking about a church as a healing community. And this takes us to focus now in our vision. We know that uh, the month of the Lord have a vision, and we want to talk through this vision so people can understand that when God gave you vision, that means that he has a plan for the month of the Lord's church. So as a church, as a community healing, we have to understand where we are so we all can have the same focus and start working toward what God has for us as a plan. So last week, we talked about shine. God called us to shine. Let me read the whole vision then we can, we can see where we're going. The vision of the month of the Lord's church. We are called to shine in goodness and beauty and be strong and filled with gladness. Drawing people in from all around, equipping a great multitude from every nation, tribe, people, language, and take up the work of the kingdom with joy. So last week, we talked about, uh, the week before, we talked about shine. And, uh, and the week that follow, no, we just do last week, shine. So today we're going to be talking about strong. The following week is going to be drawing all people, and then the last one is going to be equipping people to do the work of the ministry. So, in other words, we have everything God expected from us as a church to do in this community. That's why I'm saying the theme that draw us to talk about this vision is church as a healing community. That means that we have a place in this community. It's more than just coming to church and go, hey, yeah, I'm good. No. Like I said earlier, we are a minister of reconciliation. You have to put that in your head. As Christians, you have a place to play in this community. More than that, we have a vision for this church who put us in a position to go even further, to do great things to him. In other words, when a guy said that, uh, you are the light of the world. Then he wants you to shine. The Bible talking about shining. When you shine, what, what that means for every one of us is your way you behave. You carry yourself out. You shine to other people who doesn't even see that kind of character before. They say, oh, I just want to be like this guy. And then today we are talking about strong, strong, what that means to be strong. Is, is it we are not going through problem? No, we are. We are going through the problem. But it's not that we're going to fake the problem, but we have to be realistic about our problem and put it in the hand of God. You know, so when we talk about strong, I say every one of us in the world want to be strong, 
They're going to work out every single day, right? You like to work out, right? You want to be stronger physically, well, which, which is great. We love that because that's one of the way you can, you can see yourself, your potential of who God, the way God made you. And this, over time, you look at yourself that you have much greater strength and you want to keep going, working to keep us physically, which is great things. What about spiritual part of it? When we are talking about the strength and the spirit, it's totally different. It's totally different because it's about someone who makes us stronger than before. And someone who all-knowing, all God, who have all the power in which we rely into it, who are going to give us that strength that we all need to go through tough moments. There are the moments you can't even go through it without having God on your side. This is the point today. We want to be strong. We want to be strong by doing everything with the joy of the Lord. That's what exactly what the vision is. You and I, we are called. You may not know it. That's why our mission, we are now in the mission statement yet. Our mission statement is to help you to find your purpose of life. When you find your purpose of life, we're going to teach you how to pray so you can experience something we call transformation. And when you get to the transformation, it's the place where you know that you are not the same person anymore. Because the things that you used to do, you accept it like usual, because you have seen the light shine in your soul. You start saying, I won't do this anymore. That's the position you are going to be. And you can say, I'm not the same person you knew 20 years ago, five years ago, or a week ago, or a month ago. So God is calling us to do something wonderful. So I want to read uh, the scripture from uh, Colossians chapter 1. I want to start from verse 1 to 11. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and the faithful brothers in Christ at Colossus, grace to you and peace from God our Father. Verse 3, we always pray for you and we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and you and your love for all of God's people, which come from your confidence, hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven. You have had this experience ever since you first heard the truth of the good news. Verse 9. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Verse 10. That the way you live will always honor and please the Lord and your lives will produce every kind of good fruits. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. The verse 11 who's summarized exactly what the vision is about. Be strong and be filled with joy. 11, we also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glory, glorious power so you will have all the endurance, endurance and the patience you need May you be filled with joy. You know, life is tough. Especially in this culture we are living right now, we are being educated with the principle of this world, not much with the things of God. So we have problems to handle both things at the same time. That's the truth. We have problems. How many times, I just want to give you, I show, ask you a question that you don't have to respond to me. How many times you can balance the, way, the time you watch TV than the time you read your Bible or pray? How many times or how many hours or how many minutes you gave to prayer and reading your, your Bible compared to the time you spend watching TV? That's the way you know that our education, most of the time, 
is not come from God anymore. Or it's about the culture of this world. That's why we are constantly in warfare. That's why we are facing problems constantly because we can handle things. Our mind was not shaped with the word of God and we are not being prepared to face the things of this world. So when the problem rises up, what do we do? We get upset. We thought we can fix it. And we don't even remember to pray to ask God to help because we are not there whatsoever. Because where he is here is not the word of God. What we have here of TV and the things of this world, that's what the world is in this shape form today. But I'm gonna, I have good news for you. We're going to work together. Christianity is not live life alone and saying that I can do it by myself. It's about life of community. Life that to say, you know what? It's tough, but well, together we can make it happen. Life said that, well, hey, and what are you doing today? This week, I come for Bible study and I ask any question you can, and we can pray for each other. During the week, we have to connect with each other. Why? Because we want to be shaped, molded by the things of God. If you're not prepared to do that, the world is going to train you for the things of this world. And when you face the problem, you have difficulty to deal with. I'm encouraging you, brothers and sisters, to be part of what we are doing. So together, your suffering won't be your suffering anymore. Your suffering become my suffering. Your joy become my joy. And together, we hold hands and work together. That's the way we can win this battle. But the devil doesn't like that. Devil knew the, the, the joy. The devil, devil knew that the, the Christianity is so powerful because those people, the way they are, is more than themselves. Our life is not about ourselves. We depend on a mighty God who have all power, all strength, all things that we can pull on to it so we can go against that Goliath, that dynamic, that spirit of this world, they tell that spirit to stop. Why? We, we say to that spirit to stop because something that is in us is greater than anything in this world. And because we have that inside us, it gives us a potential, power, confidence to reign to that spirit and not be afraid. We can do it together. One person cannot. Because he's going to distract you. When you start thinking about your, your problem, only things he wants to say to you is, uh, you, you, you can't do it. I, I know you, you felt many times. Look, look back. Thinking about your past, how will you be miserable? And you think that you can make it today? That's the tactic of the devil. That's exactly what he used to do. He did that so well. And he knew how to just trip you, and you feel like, uh, and you start confessing, actually. This is the bad side of it. Is when he convicts you, he convicts you, he convicts you, you start saying, it's not me, maybe it's you who can do better. Me, I'm done. My life is horrible. I never done any good things. That is the liar of the devil. Devil is so good on it. We all know his job description is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's all he knows to do. That's why we all need to be together. We all need to fight together. Be strong spiritually is so powerful. You have to understand that. Yes, you go for a physical body, you know how to do it, and you feel better about yourself. But you know what? There are something greater something greater, something that creates in you the, uh, the happiness that cannot be described because people look at you, they, they look at your status, they say, how are this guy so happy all the time? This is a, a more than that. That's the presence of God inside you walking, just blossom through you. 
God wants to use you. Any place you go, I always say to everyone, whether you are walking, wherever you go, that's your platform as a minister of reconciliation. You go to work, walk as you are walking unto the Lord. You're not preaching. You're not telling people you have to follow Jesus. Just stand in your world. Let that word direct you. When people curse you, smile to them and bless them. Hallelujah, right? When people say things that you mess up, say, oh, I'm sorry. The whole, th- the whole things about Jesus Christ is be honest. Be honest. And uh, if you mess things up, recognize it. Take a responsibility. I always say this all the time. Tell people I messed up. I didn't know it. It happened. I did it. Take your responsibility. And when you take your responsibility, that's the place God wants you to be. He's going to fight in your behalf. But when you start lying, you start finding a way out by yourself because you, th- you talk by lying, by saying things like that, you can, uh, no, you are creating more problem for yourself. We don't need to create a problem. We need to be set free. And the God who loves us wants to set you free right now where you are. Who is there who's trying to take away your blessing? Who is there trying to tell you that you cannot make it? Who is there to let you know that uh, you are not in that kind of a status, you're not, you're not part of this, that society, therefore the blessing is not for you? Who, who can tell you that? The word of God doesn't say that. God said that he loved you. He came and he gave you his life for you. That whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. If you have eternal life, that means that you have so much to give up to the Lord. They have so much to give up to your neighbor. They have so much to give up to people that is surrounding you because you become the light of the world. Your character, your presence express a lot of things people need to know. I, I always thinking about the Moses. Moses and Joshua. This story is, is, a, is a story that uh, it touched me a little bit. The Israelites were, were on the east side of the Jordan. Before they enter to the promised land, Moses dead, was dead. He's completely dead, so Joshua had to take control of everything. So Joshua was an unexperienced person, and he had to go through everything. Huge congregation, huge people, a bigger population, and he had to see the issue that they have. God said, you got to go to conquer the land, and everybody is there. You have to destroy them. There's so much going on, but here you are, no experience. And one of the words that he described, the problem they're going to face it's like a, a Deuteronomy 9. It speaks about the, that nation, the place you are going to run out. The na- that nation is greater and stronger than you. That's what the Bible describes. With a large city that have walls up to the sky. Do you see? Here you are the leader. And when you are a leader, you are facing some. You are a brand new leader because your boss is not there and you take the role. Of, 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 of Moses, and here you are, everything is in, your, in, 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 in the face of you. You have to deal with that. And God come alongside, and Joshua 1, he said, God speak directly to Joshua and tell him, be strong and courageous. Do not be discouraged. I know many of you, God can be speaking to you that way, Unless you know if God is speaking to you directly, or it's just a word you just hear and come here and, and, and go this way. Because God always wants to use you. That's why I said earlier, when God is speaking, if he, before the word of God becomes real to you, you have to accept like he's saying that to me. Then your faith the way you cultivate by knowing him, by faith that he has for you, when you can enter that world inside you, that is the beginning of your, your work 
and the water. It's like walking the water by faith when you don't even know if you're going to sink or not. Because sometimes you have to stand in the, in the word of God and receive the word of God and make sure that God is speaking to you directly. God was with Joshua. And he will be with you and me. That's a matter of faith. The whole Bible, to make sure the sense of what we are talking about Bible is more than head knowledge. It's faith. You have to believe on it. You, and when you believe, you have to receive it. And, and, and just not have, just say faith, and just sit down there, faith. No, faith is push you to take action. Faith is telling you it's impossible, but God that is in my side is greater. I can go and get it done. Faith is so powerful. And Paul prayed for Colossians and verse 11 that I read earlier. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all the, his glorious power and be filled with joy. How can we be strengthened and be filled with joy when we face all tribulation? When we're going through against the enemy, we're going through against things that is not because I don't have a good feeling, I'm afraid. How do you do that? You got to know your God. You got to know him personally. It's nothing seem impossible. If you can get up and speak to yourself, like David sometimes, the Bible said, he encouraged himself. David encouraged himself because there are moments nobody is there. You're just by yourself. And you, you are facing trouble, you are facing things, and you have to encourage yourself. That's why the knowledge of the Word of God is very, very important. How do you encourage yourself? The Word, the promises that is in the world, that's why you know. You keep repeating that. Take example from Psalm 23. Psalm 23 that uh, even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You remember that. Uh, hmm. Here I am, I feel like uh, I'm not, uh, things are not working for me. But here God is saying, Christoph, even though you go through the valley of the shadow of death, you should not fear no evil. For God is with me. You keep repeating that over. You keep repeating that. You repeating, this is the word of God. This is come from the word of God. This is come from God. He said he's with me, but here I am. I don't feel like her. My physical eyes tell me that it's too hard. But God said, even though you go through that, don't be afraid. I'm going to be with you. Brothers and sisters, I'm challenging you with your faith. Have faith in the word of God. Believing that no matter how the problem it look like, uh, you have an almighty God who loves you so much. Even though sometimes we don't even notice this. God loves us and he wants us to be strong, not to give up. We have always a pleasant situation, like feel afraid of something. You know, when you feel, you feel like you are so afraid, and inside of you, inside of yourself, is it, I can't do it, thought come to you. It's, I cannot make it happen. This is normal things. Normal things. That's why you don't rush trying to give up on and everything that happened to you. As a child of God, yes, all oh, this is hard, it's difficult, I can't do it. I share a lot of things with my wife. Sometimes, when you are a church planter, and you face a lot of things, everything. I don't know. You face every single day that things are happening, people are saying things, and things are happening. People just want to hurt you, and all kind of things. And sometimes you know it, you can see it, the action that is before you, and what you do is, I don't even know what to do. And that pushed me to go on my knees. I said, God, I don't understand it. I don't know why all this is happening. Please, can you help me? Simple like a baby, right? I don't know. 
I don't know where that come from. I don't know why I'm being beaten down. I don't know why I'm having all those problems. God, please, can you help me? You know, some people want to go to spe uh, specialists to give them drugs and all kind of things. But sometimes go to the Lord first. Seek the way of God to help. Because God is our helper. He's our strong tower. He's the one who part the seed that you can walk through the seed, but when the enemy comes, the enemy thought that he's going to catch you, but before you know where they're drawn. God knows how to save you. Most of all, we have so much experience in the ministry, I can tell you with confidence that God can take care of us, and God can take care of you. Can you put your hand in your life in the hand of God? You know, God knows that there will be time when you feel like afraid and move forward to do something that is totally out of your comfort zone. God knows that. He knows that sometimes fear will try to paralyze you from doing what, what, doing that very thing that you know you should do. You know, it's just amazing how things work sometimes. And I believe in my heart, all of us, in this room can do the best that God called us to do. I believe that. I believe that. I believe in my heart that you don't have to be a kind of a special person before God starts using you. Just give your heart to him and love to read his word. Let the word of God stay in your heart. Let that word just renew your mind. Let that word become the source of your strength. Let that word not depart from you. Let the word of God always take place in your soul. Because after all, only God who can save us from any kind of problem we might face in this life. Amen. So, be courageous. There are moments you feel like you want to walk away. There are moments you feel like, uh, I'm so afraid, I couldn't do it, it's too hard. Yes. Instead of press toward the fear when you feel afraid, you have to push through it with the strength of God himself. I know sometimes your mind may even start racing away with all kind of what if thought. What if? It's a, it's a normal thing. Trust your God. I know when things look like dark, scary, intimidating in my life, I had to trust Him. And I'm asking you to do the same thing. Trust the Lord no matter how problem is. And that's why we become a family, you know? I love to call me, let's talk about God, let's read the word together, let's pray together. That's what family is about, you know? Because when we can pray together, we can, we can read the word together, what we are doing, the, we are surrounding ourselves with the, the, the hedge protection of God around us. Only the word who can do that through prayer. We are cover ourselves with the word of God. We are protecting ourselves with the word of God. The enemy might try, but he could not succeed. He could not succeed. Because when I first saw you falling, I'm going to take you up. I said, no, you remember what we prayed last time? God can do it for you. But when you isolate yourself, that's what the problem is. Trust God beyond your fear. Always trust God. Be strong and courageous. You know, in the word of God, there is safety when we focus trust on him and his word. It's always safety. Romans 8, 31 said that if God is for us, then who can be against us? The word of God can encourage us and clarity in mind. Father has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And 2 Timothy 1, 7. 
and the word of God reassure us in Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep in the perfect peace all who trust in you. All those thoughts are fixed on you. What I'm trying to show you is we have a way out. We have a way out. We have a way out. God is in our side. Who can be against you? God is in your side. Who can be against you? You are the head, not the tail, the Bible said. God is already have a plan for you to succeed in this life together. God has always a plan for you to speak about your heart to somebody else who is desperate out there. There are so many people who don't know anything about God. But the love and kindness that God put in your spirit just can save somebody easily. So this is who you are. This is a kind of powerful spirit that is inside of you right now. This is what we need to be sharing. You don't have to call all the word of, of the Bible, memorize it, just the kindness of God to other people. Tell them that God loved them. Tell them that God cared for them. Tell them how special they are. You already, what have you been doing? The ministry of reconciliation. That's the ministry. Please apply those little steps in order for us to look forward for the great step that is waiting for us. The Bible always talking about, uh, Apostle Paul is talking about the Corinthian people that uh, there are moments you have to walk away from milk. You know, when they have a kid, they give them milk, milk, milk. There are times you have to get a solid food. You know, so why our job here is to have church as a healing community. We want to be a healing community. And I appreciate all of you who are giving your time to help us with food ministry and all of you. I mean, I appreciate that. And I'm praying, God, to open the door, more door for us so we can uh, just help people. Help people. Today, you are ministering. God can help you to be a leader or for some people that you would direct them to do more work than you. Because we all have to start training somebody else to do the job. You know, I have a, I have a friend just come to us and, uh, in our house. He's renting. Um, he has a little bit problem, but he, I heard from him. He came to us and he started talking to me. He said, thank you for allowing me to do this. Now I feel like uh, I have a purpose. Just to t because he took, he, uh, he took food, he gave to people in his apartment who don't have anything. So he feel like he's doing something and he's so happy. You know, just little things like that. You know, um, this is, I, I think he's been Christian for a while, but everything is about himself. My, my, me, 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 me. Now he starts extending hand to other people. He's just so happy about doing that. How powerful we can put people first in our life and serve people because of the goodness of God. God is so great. And I look at you guys like a great people. A people who can lead a nation. A people who can lead another team. The people who can train to allow that together we can be a true healing community. That's all about our vision. A healing community. Some people who just uh, is out of ourselves but just give to people. God said, more you give, more you receive. Your timing you give, you will receive it. Your finances you give, you will receive back. Anything you give, you will receive back. This is the principle of the word of God. So many things about giving and receiving. If you feel like uh, nobody loves you and your family, learn to love somebody else. Before you know it, your family member is going to start loving you. If you feel like uh, you don't have anything, you don't have money, you are struggling to have money, just start giving money. You take money to people that you know they are suffering. You will see how God is going to give you money back. Planting the seed so you can have the reward back to yourself. It's a principle, but only God who can teach us that.
Only God who can show us those kind of principles so we can work on it. I pray God to help us. God to help us. I want to ask you, never give up. Never give up in your world. I know there are moments going to be so tough. You want to feel like, oh, I can do it, I can do it. I cannot do it, yes. I know it happened to all of us. It happened to all of us, but don't give up. Don't give up. I just want to let you know I can repeat that word a hundred times. Never, never give up because all you're doing is to bless, is to, to do great things. Are you a student? Don't give up. Are you doing anything that is good, going to promote something? Never give up. When you, you put your finger, your hand, your eyes, your hand in something you want to do that is going to be worth it, never give up because discouragement is going to come. A lot of things are going to come against you. Stick on it and be strong. Never, never give up. Jesus knows it's like, you know, he was being betrayed and yet he continued to trust in God. What about you? Also be brave. Be brave, be brave, be brave. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, be on your guard, stand firm in your faith. Be courageous, be strong. You know, one of the says stand fast, mean to have mature stability. You know, stand fast is somebody who fall a couple of times, come back, you, you want to make things right, you, you fall again, you come back. But there are moments you're going to be stable, mature, because God wants you to be stable, mature. We all have experience, we all have a past where things have not worked for us. But we don't have to dwell on that. Never. That's the past. We have to start looking forward. That's why 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says that uh, the all things has passed away. Behold, all things has become new. You know, we all have past. Therefore, if you don't have past, you won't, you won't learn anything. So the past is a direction for us to understand that now that I'm a new creation in God, those past will not affect me anymore. I have to start focusing on the great things that God has for me and my family. Amen? Amen? Are you getting anything from this? I'm so excited, man, for you, I'm telling you, because I know the word of God will set you free. The word of God will give you strength. And all is, is your soul to be in a place where I say, I need to drink more of this the things of God. I need to, to have that more of my life so that my mind is changed me. That transformation we are talking about is all from inside out. When the, your spirit is being moved and challenged, you will get to be a place that say, wow, now I can see. Before I feel like I'm in a dark place. But the light is just shone in me, and now I can see. We want the word of God to make us that way. Amen? Amen? God is great. So I want to talk to you a little bit about how can we keep ourselves strong in the Lord? How can we do that? The first thing is that the Bible says pray without ceasing. Learn to pray. When we talk about prayer, it just don't make that so difficult. You know, don't make prayer as a something that oh, is so hard. No. What do you love about the Bible? What kind of scripture that you have? Use that scripture. Use that scripture. Say, God, call upon him and let that scripture speak to you first. Because when a scripture speaks to you, then you can use that to speak to the Lord. You know, because you want to be touched. You don't want to just recite things, you know. I know when we are growing up, they teach us to recite things over and over. That doesn't have any meaning whatsoever. Get a scripture to speak to you. So pray with that season. The second one, remind yourself of who you are in Christ. Remind yourself. You are a holy nation. You are chosen. You are the first. You know, God calling you. He said that about you. Once you become Christian, you are special. That's what he said. So if you can remind yourself, then even though people are put you down, you are nothing, you can do anything, you are this, you are that, you are this, you are that. Yes, that's their testimony. Come to the Lord now. What did God say about me? Oh, after you read that, you just want to praise the Lord. Put your both, both hands higher and just say, thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, you have to know who you are in Christ. 
You are the child of most high God. You are chosen, you are loved, you are forgiven, you have a hope of eternity. You have all these things. You have to know that. You have to have confined in a friend. Do not suffer alone. Let others walk alongside you in your trial. This is what we are talking about. You cannot be doing this alone. That's why I'm saying I'm talking about Bible study, prayer things. This is the place you come, you, you just, you know, let the Holy Spirit help you. You can say things, but you can have a privacy also to talk to somebody that you trust about your problem if you don't feel confidence. But just fellowship is very important. You need that. We all need that. And count your blessing. You know, there are people in our life, they just look for blessing, blessing, blessing. Now, we haven't said, God, thank you for what you have done here. You know, count your blessing. See what God has done in your life to say, God, even though I feel like about, I'm so thankful for all you have done, then you can expect him again to give you something. This is all powerful, be strong. And praise. One of the things I've been talking about praise is uh, when you start worshiping and praise the, he the Heavenly Father, the enemy flees. Is you silence the power of the enemy. Praise is so powerful. Praise is, is like a, it, it just like a, the God said that, let your praise go to the heaven so the blessing come down. So praise is so important because God wants uh, to dwell in, in the presence of your praise. He wants he want to fellowship. That's where some people, when you start praising God, some people can he get healed so easily because they have raised their expectation to be healed that day. You know? So praise is very important. So uh, the, the, uh, another one is, do not neglect the fellowship through the body of Christ like we said that already. Get in the world. Let the word of God stuck in you. Just read the word. Read it, read it, pray early in the morning. Let the word of God get inside you. So long as we are focused on the negative aspect of our life, it is nearly impossible for us to build endurance hope. Make sure that you don't dwell too much over all the negative part of your life because we used to that. We repeat that over and over to the point where we forget about that God is on our side. Have you, you reminded, you know, it happened all the time, right? You have a problem, and all of a sudden, the whole day was about problem. Yes, we all do have a problem, but don't stuck there. Give that to the Lord. I have a problem. God help me. What about just simple prayer like this? I have a problem. God help me. Simple, right? This is something we're supposed to be doing. Do not dwell in the power of our problem to snap our joy because those things that take away your joy, hope that is built on anything other than God will always disappoint you. It is only in God that our hope is assured. So we pray God to help us. We pray God to help us in the way that we cannot help ourselves. And my prayer for you today, I want to stop here is your strength never going to come in this world. The strength that we are talking about and be joyful is always from God. Like I said earlier, many ways you have to keep up with the, your relationship with God. Keep up through the prayer. Keep up to the fellowship of the saints. Keep up to know who you are in God, that you are special. Even though people have put you down, no. Heather, gonna tell, Heather you're going to tell them that I'm a, I'm a great woman of God. Yeah, I'm a great woman of God. Seriously, it's not you are boasting. This is what God said about you. You can, you can, it's not boasting. You call the scripture, they may not know it. They might think that you are boasting, but you tell them, I'm a great woman of God. They might be angry, but you celebrate it because you are not afraid to tell the world who you are. God love you. God love all of you. Please, never, never give up the strength that you have. Sometimes we have strength, we don't even know we do have it. We have a strength. We are, we are in a great position to use that strength for his glory, to help people that are close to us. 
people who are suffering right now, we have all those strengths that we don't use this. Just to let you know, you are special. You are chosen. And you have all the power. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. We pray that you use this word to set any captive free and not miss. Set the captive free because it is your word who has been spoken. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are Almighty God, all powerful God, the God who inspires us to do the impossible things. We trust you this morning. We give her all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, I just want to give a little opportunity for someone who's watching, who's thinking about, oh, well, what church should I go to? Well, if you want to have church or you want to go to church, we are here. We want to welcome you, 23 Pine Street in the Milford. We are here. We are loving church. We love everybody, and we want to walk together with you or teach you how to love Jesus. So uh, if you, you have not received Jesus Christ, anybody here who have not received Jesus Christ, I want to give all of you opportunity to receive it, just a simple prayer. And I want you to repeat after me right now. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me for all my sin. This morning, I want to confess you that you are my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for forgiving me of my, all my sin. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, this is with your heart, our heart we express ourselves. We ask you to move in our life. We ask you to redeem our soul. We ask you to draw us close to you so we can walk along, you can walk alongside with us. We give all the praise and glory. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.